If you don't know me, my name's Cole, and I speak 10 different languages at different levels. And today I'll be reacting to, according to the internet, some of the worst English translations ever. And this video is not meant to poke fun at or make fun of anyone. Languages are really complicated with all their nuances, so I'm simply going to try to provide justification for a lot of these errors, as well as to show all of you guys that it's always okay to laugh at our own mistakes. There will also be some absolutely hilarious translations in other languages near the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that and enjoy the video. All right, let's do it. My body is ready. 139 translation fails that will have you rolling on the floor laughing. Wait, why am I wearing headphones? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, we got one in Portuguese. Praia limpa. Não deixa lixo na área. Don't leave trash on the sand. Everyone loves a clean <laughs> Okay, I know exactly why this is the way it is. So a lot of Brazilians that I met have a really difficult time distinguishing the long E sound from the I sound. So to an English native speaker, when a Brazilian says beach, it'll sound more like <laughs> When I was in Brazil, we were on our way to the Sao Paulo beach and my friend was like, yo, Cole, you want to go to the beach? And I was like, what? But yeah, I really hope this is real. Ooh, we actually have one in Finnish. Wow. <laughs> so literally the elevator is broken. And somehow this happened. <laughs> Due to happenstance beyond a our control, this elevator is so broken. <laughs> no idea, guys, but all the Finns that I've met are complete memers. Just saying. Okay, ooh, we got a triple threat here. Pescados, fish, poisson. Oh no. Again, guys, it looks pretty dangerous here having a sentence like this on a menu, but there's actually a perfectly good explanation for this. So let's break this down language by language. So first of all, Spanish. This is actually the name of a fish. It's called a monkfish, and they sell it in a lot of markets in Spain. And it's super expensive. Like one fish is like 400 or 500 euros. And then a la marinera just refers to the sauce that it's usually cooked in. Now this, this could either be English or French. If it's French and they just forgot some accents like here and here, then this would literally mean like grated sailor tea. I'm just trying to justify this because I have, if this is really English, I have no freaking clue. All right. <laughs> Theodore Gost tidbits. <laughs> they were so close. They were just one little letter off. Tidbits. Tidbits is what you're looking for. Por favor, no alimente a los... <laughs> Please do not feed the flamingos. <laughs> this is my favorite kind of flamingos. The one with the two pointy ears. This is just a simple typo, guys. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Ooh, Russian. Okay. Sujebni vhod. Duff only. So this just means employees only or staff only, which is probably what they were going for here. Stuff what? Where? They just used the wrong vowel. That's it. Prohibido arrojar nada dentro del sanitario. It is forbidden to throw nothing down the toilet. <laughs> So this is a little nuance in the Spanish language we can talk about real quick. Literally, this means it is prohibited to throw nothing inside of the toilet. And in English, we would say something like, do not throw anything in the toilet. But in Spanish, that construction doesn't really exist. You have to use a negative form, just nada, which literally means nothing. So if you literally translate it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in English. But again, a very, very honest mistake to make. No gritar. <laughs> Okay, so this just means to yell. So I don't know where they got cry from. You could put this into Google Translate and it would definitely say do not yell. Maybe someone looked at this picture and thought this guy was crying out of his mouth or something. I don't know. Ooh, it looks like we got some German here. Nürbei Gefahr betätigen. Tür von Herrn öffnen. And I actually don't know what this word is. And somehow this got translated to... Uh... <laughs> All of this is correct, but how did this get to this? I actually don't know what this word is. If we actually type this into Google Translate, what's gonna come up? What? How does that actually come up? Why is this a word? And if it's not a word, why is it coming up in Google Translate? Germans, please explain. Attention! What probability? Vnimanya, Skorska. This is just attention, slippery. I don't know what language this is. 
But this is why language is so great, guys. You can even say stuff like this, and I would know exactly what you're trying to say. It may not be the way that native speakers would say it, but if we can all communicate, then who cares? Schrodinger's floor? <laughs> oh, I get it, because it's both slippery, and there's also a probability that it's dry at the same time. Ne pas s'abuyer. Do not lean again. Two letters away. I feel like some dude put the text on this sign and then realized it wasn't long enough and was just like, eh, they'll get it. They'll get it. So they're pretty forgiving about the first lean. <laughs> but after that, you're done. Pão com frios. Bread with cold. <laughs> so this is, of course, Portuguese. And frio means cold by itself. But if you put it in a food context like this, like bread with frios, then it means something like cold cuts or like pieces of meat. But if you put it directly into the translator, it's just going to say cold. There you go. Ooh, another one in French. Expensively customer. You have to reserve or call a taxi. Well, they got that part right. Thank you to compose. Yes, this is why I love words so much. Because they always have several different meanings and can be used in all sorts of different contexts. Because this verb in French, composer, can mean to compose, which is what they put in the translation. But in this context, it actually means dial. They're saying thank you for taking the time to dial this number. Because cher means expensive, which is what they put in the translation. But it can also mean dear, as in dear clients, which is, of course, the context of this sign. So this just goes to show how hard it can be to translate something from one language to another if you're not a human that knows all the different nuances. Hotel B- Oh! Four different languages on one sign? Now we're talking. Crema de verdura. It cremates of greenness. That's one hell of a marketing slogan. Okay, I know exactly what went wrong here. So in Spanish, crema de verdura just means vegetable soup. But when they translated it to English, it came out to it cremates of greenness. Because in Spanish, crema can mean cream, but in this case, it can also mean soup, obviously. But the verb cremar means to cremate. So the translator must have thought that this was one of the verb conjugations for cremate, and then it seems that they just took that wrong translation into English and then translated it both into German and into French. So another great reason why human translators aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, no, not Comic Sans. Por favor, bajar las perchas. Gracias. Please, download hangers. <laughs> Thank you. Another word with multiple meanings. You see, the verb bajar in Spanish can mean a whole bunch of different things. But the general meaning of it is to go down in some way or to lower something. But it can also mean download. And that's the translation that they went with that they probably got off of Google Translate. Nice. Unas ni curiet. No smocking. <laughs> in Soviet Russia, smocking smoke you. Again, so close. No te dejes meter mano. Do not get groped. <laughs> the good thing about this is that if you read the translation directly under this one, you'd probably know exactly what they're trying to say. In this context, this is more like do not get pickpocketed. Take care of your stuff, as the sign says. Stay safe out there. No arrojar basuras en el suelo. Llamamos a la policía. Please don't throw Lilter on the floor. Call the police. <laughs> I like how they have the little accent in English translation. <laughs> what they want to say here is don't throw trash on the ground. We will call the police. But just think about what must have happened for them to put this kind of design on the sign. This dude's emptying an entire landfill onto the ground. I don't know. I really hope that sign works, though. Papas fritas chica. Fries girl. <laughs> this is a fantastic example. Because in Spanish, chico and chica mean boy and girl respectively. But in some Spanish variants, it can also mean small. You can even see below here when it says salchipap chico and small salchipap. So I don't know how they made the mistake of not translating it there. But again, a very easy mistake to make. And if you put it directly in the translator, that's exactly what you're going to get. Because chico or chica as in small is way more colloquial and more of like slang than anything else. Joda niet. Entrance? No. Another very direct translation. Without going too in-depth, there are these things called grammatical cases in Russian. And in one of the cases, the genitive case, it can be used to describe things that are non-existent. And the way these cases work is they put 
word endings at the end of all different kinds of words, like adjectives, nouns, numerals, and so on. So vhod by itself just means entrance, and nyet means no. Nope. But you can also use nyet to describe something that is not in a certain place. And if you were to do that, you'd have to add this a to vhod to get vhoda because it's in the genitive case. It sounds really complicated now that I say it out loud, but <laughs> but in short, another completely understandable translation. If you do it directly, of course. Hey, Jose. Pour le respect de tout, merci de laisser les toilettes dans l'état où vous souhaiteriez les trouver en entrant. For the respect of all, thank you to leave the toilets in the state where you would find the entrance. The direction. So in French, obviously, this makes perfect sense. In English, we would say something along the lines of, for the sake of everyone, please leave the toilets in the state or in the condition that you found them in. And you can also see the influence here with a word like entrance and en entrant, which means like while entering. So that's probably where the translator screwed up and then bungled up the whole phrase. And then la direction just means management, but literally it means management. See, we're really not all that different. We just kind of think in different ways. Toilet gratuit. Free toilets. And you get a toilet. And you get a toilet. In English, we would say, oh my God, what's the word? I completely forgot. I actually... Oh my god, it's my own language. How did I do this? All right, free synonyms. Oh, complimentary. Yep, yep, that's it. We would definitely say complimentary toilets. Because in the US, restaurants and gas stations and other public places will almost always have public restrooms. But in places like Europe, that is not the case at all. You almost always have to buy something first to then get the bathroom code from the cashier or other staff member to then use the bathroom. So this is kind of a guff by the translator, but also a cultural thing, just kind of interesting. Precaution, warning, corrientes peligrosas, rip currents. <laughs> they definitely ran out of space for this one. Just like the other one, some dude designed the sign, put the text on, and then realized, I don't have enough space to put dangerous. So we'll just put rip to get the message across. Buen appetito, good appetite, bon appetit. I've told all my international friends this. But they always ask me, Cole, what do you guys say before you eat in English? And I never have a good answer for them. Enjoy, enjoy your meal. We don't really have a set phrase like they do in Spanish, buen provecho, or in French, bon appetit. All right, so we skipped a lot of these, but let's go over some in languages that I'm not familiar with. Because usually the more different one language is from English, the more hilarious the translations are. Airports Authority of India. <laughs> Eating carpet, strictly prohibited, by order. <laughs> Airbill International Hotel, all is dead. High maintenance. Dead. Bruh, Arabic's got me weak. Toilet, the place of prayer. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> I really need some sort of closure. Why is this, this, porn fashion? <laughs> Evil saloon for men. Free milk with coconut humans. <laughs> the slickest cannibals around. Huh? Sell wholesale, sell a wing, a donkey that intimately trimmed the skirt. F I think I just had a stroke. My God, I'm never gonna mentally recover from this. Boneless lamb. <laughs> Boneless. Special woman just are not allowed to enter the men. Wait for it. Never. <laughs> you know, this one's pretty hilarious, but it gets the job done. I don't think anyone would ever want to drop butt. <laughs> oh, got him. The story of the Thai fish. Chapter one. The fish estimates sea thicket is angry. Okay, okay. The fish estimates the thicket burns salt. Go on, go on. The fish estimates the thicket burns salt. Again? The fish estimates three taste thicket. And then the redemption story, the shrimp bakes noodles made of green grams. The end. US bestseller, Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> Bro, what is up with Arabic in these hilarious translations? Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if this is actually Arabic, even though it's written in the script. So, if those were other languages in the past and I just assumed they're Arabic, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. But sweet. <laughs> Before I'd have to order them on the internet, but now I have one stop and shop for all of my butt sweets. Yeah! And it really goes to show how similar yet different we all are. But mostly similar. 
And it also shows us that learning a language isn't just learning new words. You also have to immerse yourself in the culture and know how these people use their words and why. And I think this all gives us really great insight into why translators don't always work perfectly and why human translators will always be around to understand all the nuances and complexities that come with learning a foreign language. You can check out two more of my videos somewhere on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you all have a fantastic day and peace.